Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the chapter 1 of preventive and social medicine that is man and medicine. The objectives of this session is to understand the various types of medicines which were practiced in the ancient times that is primitive medicine, Indian, Chinese, Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Greek and Roman. Let us start the discussion with primitive medicine. The primitive man, that is the ancient man, he believed that the diseases, in fact all the human sufferings and the other calamities which they faced was because of the wrath of gods. The wrath is nothing but the anger of the god which is leading to all these calamities. They also believed that the invasion of the body by the evil spirits led to the various sorts of diseases in that man. And also they believed in the stars and the planets and their influence led to the various types of diseases. So you can see the anger, the wrath of God causing the calamities and then uh, the concept of disease which the ancient man believed is popularly known as the supernatural theory of disease. So guys when they ask you about the supernatural theory of disease you have to say that the ancient man believed the diseases and all the calamities they faced is because of the anger of God or because of the stars and planets or because of the evil spirits which have entered into the body. As a logical sequence what did they do? They started appeasing the gods by prayers and also performed the various types of rituals, the sacrifices. You know they were very, uh, their understanding, their logic was very uh, blunt they started sacrificing the humans and you know there is a, a custom still going on in certain parts of the world where they sacrifice the humans and there are certain types of very bad uh, rituals in a certain place you know when they are uh, when they have to get uh, away from the stds they believe with the sexual intercourse with a certain minor girl will uh, cure the std such type of rituals very uh, bad uh, rituals and sacrifices have been practiced even today they believe that diseases is because of uh, the wrath of god and also they used to perform this witchcrafts to drive off those evil, evil spirits you know the black magic and all they even practiced even today so these uh, things was there a uh, very prominently in primitive medicine they had no knowledge about the scientific medicine everything was blamed upon the religion or they used to be very superstitious the prehistoric man, he improvised the stone and flint instruments and he performed the circumcisions, amputations and trifling of the skulls. So guys, what did we know by this is, the ancient man improved. As he improved, he started making use of the stones in a medical way. He, you know, uh, carved the stone in such a way as a knife and then he started performing burring holes into the skull of a human when the intracranial pressure was raised. To bring down the intracranial pressure, he used to put holes in the stones that is nothing but trifling of the skull. It is now obvious that medicine in the prehistoric time, that is about 5000 BC, it was intermingled with the superstition, with magic, witchcraft, religion, like as we discussed. Diseases such as leprosy, they were, you know, interpreted as the punishment from, from the past sins of the person. In some cultures, they believe that leprosy is a sin of his past which led him to this disease the medical system which are of truly indian origin is ayurveda and siddha system dhanvantri was considered the hindu god of medicine so guys now we are discussing about the next medicine uh, that is indian medicine in indian medicine you have to know that ayurveda and also the siddha the origin of these two systems is from india and who is the Hindu god of medicine? Hindu god of medicine is Dhanvantri. You can see the picture of this Dhanvantri here. And he have been born as a result of tug of war between gods and demons. Is what is said by the Indian medicine. That there was a tug of war 
between the gods and the medicine and then as a result of this demon sorry guys uh, as a result of this dhanvantri was born atharva veda the one of the four vedas is atharva veda gradually it developed into the science of ayurveda so guys the atharva veda now is considered as the science of ayurveda so you have to remember few important figures in indian medicine starting with dhanvantri which is the hindu god of medicine in the first place now we move on to the other figures like atreya charaka sushruta and so on in the next slides so let us see the upcoming slide we have atreya atreya was a great indian physician and the teacher you have a picture of atreya here the indian physician as well as a well known teacher moving on to the next important figure we have charaka what did charaka do charaka you know he may, he wrote a treatise called as the charaka samhita there were some around 500 drugs in it the indian snake root robelfia was employed for the centuries by indian physicians today we know this robelfia serpentine uh, the reserpine now the active principle has been extracted and it has been employed in the treatment of hypertension before back then uh, what did they do they employed the snake root robelfia okay before the active principle was extracted they used the they started using the crude form of the snake root for hypertension hope it's clear in this slide what did we learn guys we studied about atreya the great indian physician we studied about charaka who wrote the charaka samhita he wrote about 500 drugs and we read about the ravalfia serpentine which was used for the treatment of hypertension for centuries long moving on we have another important figure which we have to remember is sushruta who is sushruta he is the father of indian surgery he compiled the surgical knowledge of his time in his book called sushruta samhita okay what did the indians do they set fractures they performed the amputations they excised the tumors they also repaired the hernias and they excelled in the field of surgery performing many operations such as cataract and also the rhinoplasty plastic surgeries these nose jobs today these uh, rhinoplastic surgeries was very well practiced by the indian ancient men that is sushruta started this and then the britishers who over word india learned about the rhinoplasty from us trishoda theory of disease so a very important theory in ayurveda is trishoda theory now you can see the trishoda theory here, here that is vata pitta and kapha vata is the wind pitta is gall and kapha is mucus when there is any disturbance in the equilibrium of these three humors then what happens is it will result in disease this equilibrium disturbance leads to the disease is what was believed you can see vata blue in color this is pitta and kapha all these three have to be in equilibrium if any one of the leg of this uh, triangle breaks then it results in disease in a person is what is the belief of indian medicine mohenjodaro and harappa in the indus valley advanced the knowledge of sanitation water supply and engineering so flash back your memories to your social science of your school you will have studied about the mohenjodaro and harappa in the indus valley hope this picture is very familiar to everybody so this uh, what did the excellent sanitation water supply and also the engineering the unani tibbi system of medicine his origin is been its origin has been traced in the greek medicine so this unani tibbi medicine the origin was greek but these muslim rulers who came into india they spread about the unani system in india okay guys now we are done with unani next they are going to speak about homeopathy 
Homeopathy, which was propounded by doctors, propounded by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, he they gained the foothold in India. It is a system in which they treat the diseases by using a drug which produces the similar symptoms in the healthy person. So, guys, it's basically like cures. Like, so what do they do? They uh, see, uh, they you know uh, find out about a drug, and then they give it to a healthy person. They see the symptoms which it produces. The same medicine will be given in the disease, and the same medicine will eradicate the disease. Now, in allopathic system, they give the opposite uh, medicine. Here, they give a similar medicine. That is all the difference here. There, opposite cures opposite. In homeopathy, it is the like cures like. This is what they are saying here. A drug that is given to a healthy person produces the similar symptoms those of the disease being treated. You understood, girls? So, guys, uh, a drug is given to person A. It produces a set of symptoms. Now, a person B comes up with a disease which is similar to these symptoms. So, when this same drug is given, the disease is cured. Hope it's clear. So we are done with Indian medicine. Now let us have a quick, uh, you know, a recap of Indian medicine. What we studied, we studied about the two systems of Indian origin, that is Ayurveda and Siddha, and we studied about Dhanvantri, who is the Hindu god of medicine, and then uh, Atreya, the great Indian physician and teacher, Charaka, who wrote Charaka Samhita, and then Sushruta, the father of surgery. And then he wrote Sushruta Samhita. And the rhinoplasty and all those plastic surgeries, they excelled. And the Trishoda theory of disease of Ayurveda. And we also have to mention about Mohanjadaro and Harappa, Yunani and homeopathic system of medicine. Moving on to the next system, that is Chinese system of medicine, which is very small. It is based on two principles, that is Yang and the Yin. So you can see a very famous symbol here of the yang and the wind today. Uh, lots of people get uh, such tattoos saying that there is harmony, preaching the peace in the world. So it's a very famous tattoo even which is practiced even today. Here they're saying uh, the yang is an active masculine principle and in is a negative feminine principle. Now, when there is a balance between these two opposite forces, there is health. You are getting it, guys? Yang is active and it is a masculine principle. Yin, it is negative. This is active and this is negative. This is masculine and this is feminine. And there is a balance which leads to the good health. Hygiene, dietetics. Hydrotherapy, massages, drugs were used by the Chinese physician. So guys, you know, dietetics is nothing but a good diet, a healthy, nutritious diet which maintains good health. And they're talking about hydrotherapy here. It's nothing but a method which uses the water to treat the diseases in the body. So you can see a picture of the hydrotherapy here. Okay. Using water to treat diseases. They also were the early pioneers of immunization. They practiced the variolation to prevent smallpox. So what is variolation? Variolation is nothing but, you know, you're immunizing the patients by infecting them with a substance, which is uh, a mild form of the disease. Guys, that's nothing about uh, like similar. It's no way different from vaccination. Okay. Variolation is an old term for vaccination. You can take it as vaccination. They started practicing the variolation to prevent the smallpox. Okay. The Chinese have a very great faith in their traditional medicine. They have a deep faith in their traditional medicine. And they're talking about the barefoot doctors and acupuncture, which has got a great attention in the world now. Barefoot doctors were nothing but the healthcare providers who used to just provide the, like, they underwent some basic training. Some basic training and they started treating the people in rural villages in the China. And they were popularly known as the barefoot doctors. Okay. 
so with this we come to an end of chinese medicine a very simple and short thing uh, you have to remember about the yang and yin and also about the different things they use dietetics hydrotherapy and very important you have to mention is the variolation the immunization and the variolation for the smallpox barefoot doctors acupuncture moving on to the next medicine that is egyptian medicine in egypt times uh, this you know the medicine was completely intermingled with the religion you know the physicians were considered to be equal to the priest they used to be uh, like uh, residing in the temples and they were trained in the schools within the temples and they helped the priest to treat the uh, people who used to come okay no practical demonstrations in anatomy was done in the egyptian period so the the egyptian religion uh, believed in the strict preservation of the human body that was the main cause for the decline of this medicine they uh, never showed any practical demonstration nobody knew where is the heart where is the kidney nothing the anat no dissection was performed they used to preserve the dead bodies now since they never knew anything what's going on inside inside the science did not develop and the greek medicine completely declined in the world okay some few important figures you have to remember uh, we only have imhotep here imhotep is a famous statesman an architect a builder and also a physician he was considered both as god as well as a doctor he was divinity as well as a doctor you can see a picture of imhotep he was imhotep he was a divinity considered in the egypt as a divinity as well as a doctor they believe that so what was the concept in them about disease when they talk about egyptian medicine you have they believe that the absorption from the intestine of the harmful substances gave rise to the putrefaction of the blood and also there is a formation of the pus so uh, as a result what they used to do so guys nothing but the absorption of any harmful material imagine this is a harmful material in this the intestine the absorption of these harmful materials led to the disease was their concept so what they did they believe uh, that uh, you know um, pulse was the speech of the heart so and also that they started treating these harmful substances by use of cathartics so guys cathartics is nothing but a substance which is going to accelerate the defecation in a person you know it's kind of similar to um, laxatives that's the reason i put up a picture here so what they did they gave cathartic you know cathartic see cathar tick egyptians they gave cathartic what did this cathartic do normally uh, what does laxatives do they just you know uh, the full uh, formed fecal matter from the rectum will be expelled whereas in the cathartic the entire colon entire intestine is going to be emptied out okay and they also believed in some cruel methods such as blood letting enema and they used a wide range of drugs so this is about the egyptian medicine imhotep is the thing you have to remember and the very good thing they found was the pulse and that was they considered it to be the speech of the heart this is very important and uh, moving on we have the two manuscripts which were written in the greek that is edwin smith papyrus and ebers papyrus these two manuscripts you know uh, one that is uh, edwin smith papyrus speaks about surgery and ebers is nothing but a prescription which is based on some 700 drugs this uh, ebers papyrus was found on the river of nile on a dead body so you can see here smith edwin smith ebers papyrus 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 you only have to remember edwin smith and ebers two p things edwin smith and this is ebers so this was a treatise on surgery 
and ebers was found on the nile river on a mummy and it has 800 prescriptions written on some 700 drugs so these were the prescriptions of some 800 prescriptions of the people being recorded in that book in that manuscript laws relating to the medical practice including the fees which is payable to the physicians for the satisfactory services and also the penalties which were given for the harmful therapy are contained in the Babylon code of Hammurabi it was the first codification of medical practice so guys this is very important now where did the medical fee and everything start who started framing these laws the egyptian people and it was written in the babylonian code of hammurabi okay this is this code of hammurabi and he is babylon babylonian it seems okay babylonian code of hammurabi cool guys we are done with the uh, egyptian medicine let's have a quick recap imhotep no anatomical demonstrations uh, harmful substances absorbed from intestine leads to diseases pulse was the speech of the heart and they used the very cruel methods like bloodletting cathartics and two manuscripts edwin smith about surgery ebers about the prescriptions 800 prescriptions on 700 drugs and the laws like the medical fee and all was uh, written in the Babylon code of hammurabi greek medicine now we are moving on to the next medicine that is greek medicine the greeks you know they enjoyed the reputation of the civilizers of the ancient world they thought meant to determine things of how and why so they did not simply blindly believe that uh, the disease is because of uh, god or it is because of superstition or religion or magic instead they started thinking how does that disease occur and why does it occur and the early leader in greek medicine was esculapius esculapius had two daughters one was hygeia and the other was panacea so guys you can see a picture of esculapius here and then he bore two daughters that is hygeia and panacea hygeia was worshipped as a goddess of health you can see hygeia here she was considered the goddess of health and she is panacea panacea was considered the goddess of medicine now here the dichotomy between those two medicines that is preventive as well as the curative medicine started hygeia was considered as prevention and now it's fashionable among the intellectuals whereas panacea was considered as a curative medicine now that gets the cash to us so nobody is going to give you cash and money that you prevented a disease no uh, but whereas the panacea now it is a cure curative medicine and she gets the cash to the physicians thus the dichotomy between the curative medicine and preventive medicine the difference the dichotomy started the differentiation between those two came up now they are talking about a symbol that is a staff which is entwined by a serpent it is a symbol of medicine so you can see here they are talking about this uh, story so there was a god mercury there was two uh, there was a fight which is going on between two snakes and he threw a rod and those two snakes entangled between those two uh, like that rod which belonged to esculapius and from then this uh, rod which belonged to the esculapius is considered as the symbol of medicine okay guys greatest physician in the greek medicine was hippocrates hippocrates is the father of medicine very popular and very well known who is the father of medicine that is hippocrates he studied and classified the diseases based on observation and reasoning now slowly you can see the development of the science in the diseases they started classifying the diseases they started studying diseases observing and reasoning them why did this disease occur 
how did this happen in the person all these were started in greek that was the beginner of all these is hippocrates he started the application of clinical methods in the medicine as well the greeks believed that the matter that is the human body uh, uh like uh, they believe that it consists of four humors and also the mm, it was made the matter was made up of four elements that is earth air fire and water understanding guys four matters okay earth air fire and water and then like so on uh, so far we have studied about trisho the theory and uh, now we are going to study about a very similar thing in greek that they represented the body by the four humors so you can see the four humors here the phlegm the phlegm which is nothing but water then comes elobile which is representing the fire the blood which is nothing but air black bile which is representing the earth so we read about the matter which is made up of four things and also the body which is representing these matters in the form of four humors you understanding guys so this was the matter any matter which is containing four uh, things that is earth air fire and water which is represented in the form of phlegm yellow bile black bile and blood so guys you can see phlegm this is a bile this is a bile yellow bile black bile and blood very clear moving on greeks also postulated that health Uh, will be you know in a harmony it will prevail when these four humors will be in equilibrium within the body and once the balance between these four humors disturbs the disease will occur in an individual moving on to the roman medicine romans had to borrow their medicine from the greek whom they conquered so these roman people never gave much importance to medicine in fact they were more concerned about hygiene about the improvement in the architecture and uh, cared a little less about the medicine so they started following the greek medicine the same which they conquered they had a keen sense of sanitation they were born in rome uh, what was uh, the public health took birth in the room and also they developed the baths sewers and aqueducts so you can see the bath and sewers of the room and this is the roman aqueduct guys aqueduct is nothing but a small type of a channel a channel or a pipe the tunnels or the canals what we use today is nothing but the aqueduct in the old roman terms where they used to bring the water clean water to the society from this the romans made the fine roads throughout the empire so you can see the roads here which they constructed they were more concerned about the roads and then uh, sewage system and sanitation they also brought the pure water to the cities through aqueducts they drained the marshes to combat the malaria so you can see here the people draining the marshes to combat the malaria they built the sewage system sewerage system and also they built the hospitals for the sick a very important figure in uh, roman medicine is galen so i guess you saw the picture in the next uh, slide there is a picture of galen galen told that uh, both in time that health both in importance and in time both the things okay uh, important wise and the timely wise in both ways that the health precedes the disease so we have to consider first how health can be preserved and then we have to worry about how we can cure a disease you're understanding guys what did galen say he spoke about the prevention of the disease in the first place rather than curing it they believe that both in importance and times we have to make sure that we prevent the disease we preserve the health in the body preservation is uh, preservation of the health is much better than curing the diseases so much importance was given to preserving the health 
Galen also observed that the disease can occur because of the three factors that is a predisposing, exciting and also the environmental factor. Galen was literally a medical dictator of his time. He, his writings are accepted as the textbooks of medicines for about 14 centuries. So a very important figure in the medicine of Rome is Galen. He spoke about the factors for diseases, predisposing, exciting and environmental. And he wrote the um, uh, writings and those writings were taken as the textbooks. Clear guys? So with this we come to an end of Roman medicine. I hope everything is clear. If you have any uh, like doubts you can put it in the comment section. And if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.